Good afternoon and welcome to Motors TV and our live coverage from Pembury here in South Wales this afternoon of the Dunlop Great and British. Well, we've got lots of race action for you this afternoon. There has been a slight delay to proceedings. You could probably see just behind me there's been a bit of a clear up going on, but this race is about to continue. So let me introduce you to our race commentator this afternoon, David Addison, for the latest. Thanks, Diana. The cars on the grid are those from the very successful Dunlop Sport Max Production Cup. And as you can see, the grid is starting to reform now. It's going to be the restart of what initially was going to be a 20-minute race. We're down to 12 for part two. And the reason we've had this interruption and a fairly lengthy delay was that Jordan Witt, one of the quicker drivers in Class B with his BMW 120 diesel, had a big, big lose coming out of the last corner, the very fast right-hander of Honda Curve got onto the grass, came across the road and hit the barrier very, very hard indeed. And the net result is that that is no longer a BMW 120D. It's more of a sort of 119 and a half. It is a good bit shorter than BMW intended. You can see the damage on the front and on the back and to the barrier as well. And the Pembrey circuit staff and the marshals have all been hard at work to make that barrier safe once again. And the drivers have been out of the cars getting some fresh air. The grid now reforming, as I say, ready for the restart. And it's going to be the result of part two alone that determines the grid. Jordan Witt, novice cross, you see, on the back of the car, but he has been pretty successful this year. Indeed, he's had three class wins with the BMW. But sad to say that he's not going to be on the grid for this, nor, I fear, given the amount of damage, is he going to be on the grid for the third and final Sport Max race towards the end of the afternoon here in South Wales. Pembrey is the Welsh Motorsport Centre. It celebrates its 20th birthday this year. Indeed, this is the 20th anniversary meeting. And the Dunlop Great and British package is one that brings a great assortment of different championships together, such as saloon cars, sports cars and single seaters as well. We'll be having a look at most of them over the course of the afternoon. And so Adrian Churchill on pole position for this restart is the man on pole ready for the green flag. The Dunlop Sport Max Cup then for race two gets the green flag. The car's released onto the final warming up lap. Everybody on Dunlop Rubber, of course, within this package. And Adrian Churchill on pole position now. He was the man that won yesterday's race. Indeed, he's had six race wins already this year. And he was doing a very good job, of course, up to the red flag. Hence, he starts part two on pole position. You'll see in the background there's a car that's going to have to start from the pit lane. And that is Andrew Maggie, the Russian driver with the turbocharged Mini but on board with Craig Curry with the Nissan 370Z. Craig, somebody else that's gone pretty well this year. Indeed, he had a race win at Alton Park, and he's going to be starting on the third row of the grid for this 12-minute restart. Now, like the British Touring Car Championship, this category, which in many ways mimics it, deliberately mimics it, runs success ballast, and that means that if you finish in the top five, you carry ballast into the next race. Hence, Adrian Churchill, on the pole position for the restart, is lugging around 45 kilos. It means that Gary Duckman, who lines up with him at the front of the grid has 18 kilos. Ryan Bensley has 36, Stuart Clark has 27, and Dan Malone has nine kilos. And there's the mini I was talking about, starting from the pit lane, Andrew Maggie, who really is the man to beat within Class B. He's had four race wins there. However, this could well turn out to be a much tougher proposition because he's going to have to work his way not only onto the tail of everybody from a pit lane start, but then, of course, uh, work his way past what is now admittedly limited class opposition. There's only really Kevin George for him to battle against in the demise of Jordan Witt, but even so, he might uh, have to mix it with one or two of the slower Class A cars. The two classes, and they're based not on engine size, but power to weight, and that's why you get the two-litre turbo Astras taking on, for example, the much bigger engines, the 3.7-litre Nissan 370Z. And there is a car that is going to be one to watch. Number nine is Dan Malone with the Seat Leon. It carries nine kilos of success ballast and it slipped back a little bit on the original start. Therefore, we'll start part two on the third row. And remember, it's only the results of part two that will give us the race results. So what went before gives us a grid for the restart, but no more than that. And they come then now out of the uh, kink of Woodlands, down towards Honda Curve, and then they will slot into place on the grid. And it was Honda Curve that was the corner at which poor Jordan Witt had his moment in the original attempt to run this race and ended up in the pit wall where you can barely see the damage now. All the bits of debris have been cleared off the road, so the marshals have done a superb job. And so part two of race two of the weekend is about to get underway. It's the red Astra of Adrian Churchill then on pole position, the uh, yellow and blue Seat alongside Gary Duckman who is a relative newcomer to the championship. Indeed, he joined in at Alton Park last time out, but he's a successful driver, the reigning Porsche 924 champion. And then on the second row, you've got Ryan Bensley and Stuart Clark, another experienced driver, Stuart, who returned, what, two seasons ago now, after a number of years away, but he goes very well. And that is Andrew Maggie, starting from the pit lane in the Mini Cooper. 
the 1600cc turbocharged Mini Cooper S. So then, everybody looks towards the lights. One by one, staggered grid for all standing starts at Pembroke here. Drivers look towards the lighting gantry. The lights go red. Lights will blink out now, and away they go for 12 minutes for the restart of this, the Dunlop Sport Max Production Cup race. And it's a good start made despite the extra weight by Adrian Churchill. Then on the way down towards the hatch, it's hairpin for the first time. But Gary Duckman tries to challenge and then also looking to squeeze up the inside is Ryan Bensley as they turn into the braking area. But Adrian Churchill it is who leads the way in a really good start by 23. Craig Curry looking the quicker of the two Nissans because he is up into fourth place and he's got his teammate Endaf Owens alongside him. The two of them almost leaning on each other as they go out of Spitfires through Devaney Ben for the first time. And the two yellow perils running together with Craig Curry just ahead of Endaf Owens who was a winner in Mini Melias yesterday and led the mini race earlier on today until something broke. But it's Adrian Churchill then who leads the way, chasing after him is Gary Duckman. And it's 12 minutes, remember, not a set number of laps. The flag will go out the first time the leader crosses the line once the 12 minutes are up. And this is the view of Craig Curry, the man that won at Alton Park, chasing after Ryan Bensley then now, as they sprint their way up towards the right-hander of Woodlands and then down the speedway straight for the first time. And if anything, Adrian Churchill looks like he's getting away a bit from Gary Duckman. Despite the extra weight that he's got to haul around, he has a very useful lead already. Craig Curry going through fourth. And Endaf Owens, who is pretty busy this year, competing in the British Autograph Championship, making a one-off outing, really, in the Sportmax Cup and doing a really good job as he comes now down towards the hatches hairpin. He's got the inside line there. Is Endaf Owens, the Welshman, going to be able to gain a place? Yes, he is. Endaf Owens goes through. Runs a little bit wide, gets sideways as well. Craig Curry in 23 tries to sprint up the inside, but Endaf Owens moves across, closes the door. And so Craig Curry, you're riding with him, gets elbowed back down into fifth place. The two Nissans going well, having a good battle against one another. The danger is they might lose touch with the Vauxhall and Seat battle that goes on for the race leadership. The leading three then, Vauxhall, Seat, Vauxhall. Well, at the moment, Endaf Owens is taking the fight very definitely to Ryan Bensley, isn't he then? So the man that was the 2008 stock hatch champion, Brian Bensley coming under increasing pressure. He's got the two yellow Nissans behind him, and if anything, he's also now starting to speed up and perhaps close a little on Gary Duckman. Down they come then towards that right-hand kink at Woodlands, then down towards Honda Curve. This will complete lap number two, and we've got just under 10 more minutes of the race remaining, so there's plenty of time left yet in which Endaf Owens can gain another position. He comes out of Honda Curve, there he is in the yellow and black Nissan, and he's right on the tail of the blue box all now. Ryan Bensley's going to have to go defensive on the way down to the hatchet's hairpin. Endaf Owens may not know the car that well, but he knows the circuit pretty well. He's also been busy this weekend with two other races, apart from his Sportmax Cup outings, but he leaves the door open, and Craig Curry launches himself up the inside, finds a Vauxhall in the way. Can he gain a place? No, he can't. Had to back out of that. So Endaf Owens just about hangs on to his fourth place, but Craig Curry now looking very toey indeed as he tries to gain fourth place away from his teammate. On board with Craig Curry, hard at work here, and Endaf Owens really busy. He's trying to attack for a place and defend fourth as well. He tries to come up alongside Bensley now as they turn their way up through the centre S's, then towards the Brooklyn Terpin. And Ryan Bensley, you can see now, having to defend. He's falling away from Gary Duckman as Endaf Owens goes up the inside, he uses the grass, uses the curb, gets sideways, and Bensley comes off worse. He runs really wide, and Craig Curry goes past him as well. From third to fifth, then, in one easy manoeuvre for poor old Ryan Bensley. He's trying to retaliate on the run down now towards Woodlands, but it's to no avail, I'm afraid, because up into fourth place now goes Craig Curry. And behind them, there's another good battle going on where you've got Stuart Clark after a slow start trying to fend off Dan Malone. But the leader, Adrian Churchill, is well clear as we look back now from Craig Curry's car. Ryan Bensley is behind him as they go down towards Hatchet's Hairpin. And then look behind Ryan Bensley, Stuart Clark busy defending from Dan Malone. These two closing as well on the blue Vauxhall as they go through the Hairpin. Very, very tight corner. Got to be so, so careful getting the power back down too early and you'll get the back of the car stepping out of line. It's going to be fairly progressive. And there now, up through Divani Bend, goes number 28, Endaf Owens. So he's got himself now up into third place. His next target is Gary Duckman. Last time through, he wasn't lapping quite as quickly as Gary was in the SEAT, with which Simon Shaw won last year's championship. There in fourth place, you've got Craig Curry in the second of the Nissans, and Ryan Bensley not really being able to gain any ground on them at the moment, it seems. And then behind him, you'll see the Thorny Motorsports run Vauxhall Astra in the hands of Stuart Clark. The two Nissans, though, I just think now possibly are getting themselves together. Last time, Endaf Owens lapped quicker than his teammate. Now they have got themselves together, and Craig Curry looking for the inside, diving down to Honda Curve, and that was a pretty easy pass. So all of a sudden, he's found the time, he's found the gap, and he's found third place. Runs a little bit wide. Endaf Owens tries to fight back as they come across the line with now seven and a half minutes on the clock. Down to the hairpin. 
up to third, then is Curry. Down to fourth is Owens. And Ryan Bensley coming back into the mix and taking with him Stuart Clark. And he, in turn, is taking Dan Malone with him. You're looking back from Craig Curry's car now. Endaf Owens, the Mini Melia star. Many years of racing minis under his belt. And now a grass track star as well. Endaf Owens, hard at work, trying to retake his third place. Craig Curry, though, from the third row of the grid for this restart, chipping away now at the gap between him and Gary Duckman ahead. It's two seconds, but last time over the line, Craig Curry lapped faster than Gary Duckman did. So if he can shake off the challenge of those behind, he's got a real chance now of getting onto terms with Duckman for second place. And there, I'm afraid, back into the pit lane from where it started is Andre Maggi's Mini Cooper S. And the team's still concerned about something. He pitted just as the red flags came out. That's why he started the restart from pit lane. And clearly, the problems persist. Fingers crossed that's going to be good to go in race three. Now, for fourth place, Ryan Bensley attacks once more on the inside. Has Endaf Owens got a problem? It's another place lost for him. And that car does seem to be fading a little bit. So, Bensley up to fourth. And then you've got the Black Astra charging along behind Stuart Clark last time through. Did a personal best lap. He's certainly lapping quicker than Endaf Owens, who must have a problem because Clark easily goes through on the inside. And now, Dan Malone who was a star in Class C of the championship for the baby class cars last year, gains a place as well. So after his very spirited start to the race now, I'm afraid, Endaf Owens falling further and further down the field. We are into the second half of the race, then we just nudged past half distance. Less than six minutes of the restart to go. The gap between Adrian Churchill, the leader, and Gary Duckman is extending to 3.3 seconds. But now Craig Curry third is certainly catching the second place sayer. There going through is Ryan Bensley. He's up into fourth place now, but behind him and getting better as the race wears on is Stuart Clark. He had a bad qualifying session, did Stuart, with a broken damper, and that in turn put him towards the back of the grid for race one. But it was a slow start, both first time around and at the restart of this race. And again, he's having to work hard all the way through to the chequered flag, gained the places grid, and then he lost off the grid. The race leader comes down to Honda Curve there. Second is the Seat in the hands of Gary Duckman. Third is the Nissan of Craig Curry, going really well. And although Stuart Clark there looking the black and green Astra run by Fordy Motorsport, He's getting quicker, and he's taking with him Dan Malone, so there's another fight raging on here. Headlights ablaze, indeed, as they come over the line. Stuart Clark, he's only a tenth of a second ahead. Now, in fact, alongside Dan Malone, and it's Malone that's going to outbreak him as they go down to the hairpin. Stuart Clark gave him plenty of racing room, and so Dan Malone in the sack goes through. Is he going to run wide a little bit? But Stuart Clark wasn't really able to do a switchback and duck up the inside. So he loses out, and he's now running in sixth place. The Seat, the orange Seat, goes ahead of the black and green Vauxhall Astra. Both of them two-litre turbo cars. The gap between the leaders continues to hover around 3.2 seconds, whereas the last time there in third place, Craig Curry pulled back another couple of tenths against Gary Duckman, the man he's chasing after. And you'll see the yellow and blue say at in second place, still having to look to his mirrors is Gary Duckman because he knows just how close the Nissan is getting. Then fourth, the blue Astra, Ryan Bensley. Fifth, the orange say at of the new fifth placement, Dan Malone, and Stuart Clark fading a little bit as well now. The Astras are reasonably hard on tyres, but I guess the feeling is something rather more sinister than that. Stuart Clark's car no longer seeming to have the pace. The lap times are going up. He's fallen back down into sixth position. Go back ten years, Stuart was one of the leading lights in the National Saloon Car Cup, as it then was, when he ran against Power Talk. But Adrian Churchill, the race leader, a rather dominant race leader, three seconds to the good, has been racing for many, many years. Recently successful in the Euro Saloon Championship. He was quick and successful in the Super Coupe Cup, going back even many seasons before that. And the Northampton Garage owner, the family firm just based on the A5 outside Toaster, leads the way. Now, having said he's a dominant race leader, he's got three seconds in hand, but the gap is coming down a little. So Gary Duckman possibly speeding up because he can see Craig Curry closing on him for second place. He's starting to chip away now this deficit to this man, Adrian Churchill. Adrian had a great start to the season. He won all three races at Rockingham. He had another win at Snetterton. He had a win at Alton Park and he won here yesterday. So despite the fact that he's got 45 kilos of extra weight on board, he's adapting to that very, very well indeed. Conditions at Pevray this weekend, absolutely glorious, but that means for the drivers, life is very uncomfortable inside the cars. It's really hot. And as soon as the red flags came out and everybody stopped on the grid, everybody leapt out of the cars to get some fresh air. Adrian Churchill leading the way. Last time, he was three seconds clear. We've got three more minutes to go. Over the line he goes. Now, what's the gap between him and Gary Duckman? It's still hovering around three seconds. So really on that lap, Gary Duckman not being able to come back at him. In third place is Craig Curry, who is falling away, but being caught in turn by Ryan Bensley. There's Duckman then, adapting from Porsche 924s to say apps from sports cars to a rather more modern day saloon car for this year. But behind it, the battle for third really has taken hold now. Craig Curry versus Ryan Bensley. Gary Duckman charging on. He's in a reasonably secure second place, I would say, at the moment. He's not going to catch, or is he going to be caught, I don't think. But then, look behind him, because in a moment you'll see the two together, Nissan versus Vauxhall, and Ryan Bensley, who was third early on, remember, he's desperately keen to get himself back onto the podium here. 
Gray Curry, who somebody else has fought his way up the order, hangs on to the place for the moment. But Ryan Bensley, last time around, was four tenths of a second quicker on that lap, and he's being caught as well. Look, Dan Malone is going after him. There's that right hand king that they will go through at Woodlands, then down to that very fast corner of Honda Curve, and the Nissan slows, just like we saw Ennap Owens with a problem earlier. Now something has gone wrong for Craig Curry as well. So, number 23, there it is. The quicker of the two Nissans over the last few laps slows on this lap number nine of the race, and a very frustrating Craig Curry beating seven bells out of the steering wheel, and he knows that that's his good chance for a decent race result all but below. No, he's just got a limp round to the end. It's a balloted grid for the third race, so all he's not lost for him as long as he can get to the finish, but what should have been third, I'm afraid, ends up, well, assuming he gets the finish, in a much lower spot. He's now down in fifth. He could drop even lower than that before the end of the race, and you can see that he is hugely frustrated, but it may be that it's got into some sort of limp home mode because when the cars start to overheat, they do have this tendency to, to shut down effectively, and it could be that with the temperatures so, so high here at Pembrey this weekend. So Craig Curry has just got a limp it round. We've got another minute and change on the clock. He's going to be there for one more lap for the race leader at the end of this. And now the battle is on for third place with Ryan Bensley under pressure. Look from Dan Malone. Down they come through the right-hand kink of Woodlands. Fifth gear part of the circuit, then fourth on the curve. And this is the fight for third between Bensley and Dan Malone. Last lap of the second Dunlop Sport Max Production Cup race of the weekend here at Pembrey. Adrian Churchill leads the way by three and a half seconds from Gary Duckman, but this man, Ryan Bensley, is third as he goes into Hatchet's hairpin. But is he going to survive in third place? He's got Dan Malone tucked up behind him. We're into the last 28 seconds of the race, then it looks like Adrian Churchill's going to score a second win of the weekend. But third place is still up for grabs, and the two troubled Nissans are still going. Craig Curry currently running in fifth place, and NDF Owens in seventh. But both of those cars having had problems. Andre Maggi, you can see in the background in the Mini, has rejoined after another pit stop. And there is Adrian Churchill, who is the race leader, and he's going to become a race winner as well. He's only now got, what, three corners to go. This is the first of them out of the Brooklyn's hairpin, a long speedway straight. He's going to go right, fifth gear, part of the circuit through Woodlands, knock it back to fourth gear for Honda Curve, and then up to fifth as he accelerates across the line. They don't use top in these cars. They've got six-speed boxes, but the highest they'll ever do is fifth. And so down to fourth for Honda Curve. It's going to be another race win for Adrian Churchill. It'll be his seventh of the season. He comes up then now, the clock has hit zero, the chequered flag waves, and Adrian Churchill scores victory in the Dunlop Sport Max Production Cup. Gary Duckman comes across the line second, and Ryan Bensley survives for third ahead of Dan Malone in fourth. And Adrian Churchill may have made life look pretty easy at the front, but he has not put a wheel wrong there, had to maintain concentration all the way through. And with very high cockpit temperatures, it's not an easy time at all. Craig Curry, in the meantime, finishes fifth. Could have been a lot worse for him, to be fair, but it's not what he was expecting. He ran third for the mid part of the race and hugely frustrated, as we saw so graphically, when the car suddenly slowed. His last lap was a 1 minute 8, everybody else being 1 minute 7, so the pace got a little bit better, but it's still not quite what he wanted. And another frustrated driver, I would have thought, at the end of that, is going to be Stuart Clark, who only ended up in sixth place, despite looking as though he was making progress mid-race. So Adrian Churchill, the race winner, three seconds clear of Gary Duckman in the end, Ryan Bensley third, and Kevin George, son of British Touring Car Championship racer, John George, the man that won Class B for the... Uh, smaller engine cars against Andre Maggi, but with his pit lane start and another pit stop, Andre Maggi really treating that race as a bit of a test session, getting the car right for race three. And of course, Jordan Witt, the other Class B driver, never took the restart given the huge damage to his BMW. But Jordan, I'm glad to say, was okay despite being a bit shaken and bruised after headbutting the barrier in you know, the first attempt to run the second of three races in this championship here at Pembrey this weekend. So the cars heading down towards the pit lane. So a very rapid Stuart Clark on this slowing down lap, as though he's a pretty frustrated Stuart Clark and wants to get back to the team as quickly as possible to get working on the car. But let's confirm the way the top six came across the line. Adrian Churchill, the race winner, Gary Duckman second, and Ryan Bensley third. So the Seat sandwich between the two Vauxhalls. Dan Malone coming home in fourth place. Craig Curry's Nissan in fifth, and Stuart Clark's Vauxhall Astra rounding out the top six. And there is Adrian Churchill heading the cars into the pit lane. Pembrey, as I say, celebrating its 20th birthday this year. And Adrian Churchill, a very happy race winner. Not happy at all, though, Craig Curry. And this was the reason why, when the car suddenly slowed, what, three laps from home, banging the steering wheel. And you can tell from the body language just how frustrated he was. Fifth place in the end, not that bad, considering the problems he had, but it should have been a whole lot better for him.
And fingers crossed that things will improve when we get to race three later on in the afternoon here at Pembroke. So here in South Wales, the drivers in the pit lane. There is Adrian Churchill, who's about to take his crash helmet off and have a word with Diana Binks. Yes, I am down here, David. Adrian's just taking his helmet off. I'm just giving him his uh, cap. He's just catching his breath for a second. Two out of two. Pretty hot in that car as well. Um, you had quite an yeah, it's, I mean the car's going quality sport and they're going really well. I, I was a bit concerned start starting on a wet patch where they're clean. So, uh, we managed to keep it in the front. Uh, frantic repairs, lots of stuff going on before that race. So, um, but you're happy to take the win? Yeah, two out of two. Let's see if I. Well done. Thank you. Back to you. So Adrian Churchill receives his garland and the clerk of the court, Ian Watson from the BARC, hands it over. He's been a fairly busy man in the last half an hour trying to keep a race meeting on schedule and look after barrier repairs, but we've got the race completed and it's another win, as he says, for Adrian Churchill. So a very successful weekend it's proving to be so far, despite the extra weight he had to carry them, 45 kilos, it's a race win for him. And we'll wait and find out after we've had that balloted draw where he's going to start race number three and that's probably going to prove to be a lot harder for him so the Courtney Motorsport team doing a grand job of running the Vauxhall Astra for him this season all looking good for him in the championship and a much needed glug of water for the race winner so we've got a further Dunlop Sport Max production cup race coming up later on in the afternoon